Good morning and welcome to the Empire Metals Limited Investor Presentation. Throughout this recorded presentation, investors will be in listen-only mode. Questions are encouraged and can be submitted at any time using the Q&A tab situated on the right-hand corner of your screen. Simply type in your questions and press send. The company may not be in a position to answer every question it receives during the meeting itself. However, the company will review all questions submitted today and publish responses where appropriate to do so. Before we begin, I would like to submit the following poll. And I would now like to hand you over to Managing Director, Sean Bunn. Good morning to you, sir. Yeah, good morning, Alex, and thank you for the introduction. And welcome to uh, those uh, those on the call, our shareholders and other uh, interested investors. I welcome this opportunity to give you a you know a brief overview of where the company is currently sitting and what our strategic direction is going to be over the next you know 12, 18 months. So I think it's really important uh, you know juncture in in the growth of of Empire Metals and great opportunity to bring you all uh, along for the ride. So. Uh, without further ado, I'd like to maybe just slip into the presentation. So just a, a cautionary note about uh, forward-looking statements and the fact that our uh, all our work has been checked by a competent person. But of course, we uh, we need to remind people that this is not a, a an effort to try and promote or uh, sell extra shares at the moment. So. On to uh, the detail. So what, look, it's been a very, uh, very important last six to 12 months for Empire Metals. We've moved uh, from a very small, uh, high-grade gold focus uh, at the Eclipse uh, you know, project instead of Kalgoorlie. We've built onto that uh, what is basically a, a very large portfolio of uh, high-grade copper gold and base metal prospects in two major regions of Australia. So the, the, the focus at the moment has been largely on building uh, you know, high quality assets within the Yulgarn Craton, which is you know, a large part of the West Australian gold fields and Nickel Belt, you know, a major source of some big copper projects. Also, we have a, a very strategic position in Victoria at the Stavely Arc, just north of a, of a very successful uh, discovery made by uh, by an Australian explorer uh, called Stably Minerals, and that's a very exciting target as well. We're particularly focused now on Pitfield. I think you'll you'll hear a lot about Pitfield today. Pitfield is what we believe an emerging giant copper system. It's it's an amazing uh, target for us. It has huge potential, and we are very excited about that development. We've also continued to be drilling at the Eclipse and Jindalby area over the last 12 months, and we're, we're very excited about the prospect of getting some value out of that particular uh, license area. We're advancing that quite well. And we, of course, have the other project coming online soon, which would be Walton, which is in the Southern Cross domain. Uh, strong board, talented exploration team, well-funded, we are really starting to gain some momentum. So talking to the board just very briefly, uh, most of the shareholders now know who I am. I've been with the company just over 18 months. Greg, who's also on the call, our financial director, has been with the company for a, for a much longer period of time since its formation. Uh, and I'm very pleased to also uh, I highlight the fact that we have Dr. Neil O'Brien, who is a very senior exploration uh, expert, uh, ex Lunda Mining, who's the uh, senior vice president of exploration for that group, and uh, you know has a very big interest in and supporting us in terms of how we're developing, particularly the pitfield target. And Peter Demerni, who is our uh, one of our nine executive directors. Uh, you know, very experienced financial guy and he's been a great support to us over the last, uh, you know, several years in terms of building capacity at the board level to, uh, to raise money and execute our work program. So coupled with that, we've been recently announced uh, the, uh, the recruitment of Andrew Ferrara, 
Now, Andrew brings with him a wealth of experience, not just in, in copper, but also in uh, a number of major commodities. Andrew was a very senior uh, employee of Rio Tinto. He was the chief geologist for their iron ore and bauxite division. And prior to that, he was the exploration manager uh, for basically their Canadian operations. So we're really pleased that we were able to recruit someone with Andrew's experience and calibre. He's only been with us a few weeks. He'd be on the call this evening, but he's actually on the side of Pitfield, along with Ed Baltus, our uh, exploration consultant. They've been up there for the last few days, uh, surface mapping, uh, doing some of the groundwork ahead of our drilling. Ed, who you'd be familiar with now, has been with the company for just over 18 months uh, as a consultant, but he's also one of the key founders of Century Minerals, who is the joint venture partner in Pitfield. Louisa Stokes uh, is a very talented, very capable exploration geologist. She's actually doing a PhD at the Curtin University at the moment. So she is assisting us with a lot of the technical strategic uh, you know, reviews, uh, but she also has obviously a requirement to complete a PhD. So she is working intermittently on our projects. Uh, a quick glance at where we stand in terms of our uh, corporate uh, shareholders and our structure. Um, currently, uh, share price when we went to uh, publish this at 2.3p, Capital, a market cap just over 11 million pounds, and we have just under uh, 500 million shares on issue, 483 million roughly. So we've got uh, a strong share price at the moment. We're pushing up. We, uh, we're battling the headwinds. We've got a number of new significant shareholders have come onto the register in the last uh, th three to six months, and we're very pleased to see, uh, you know, some very... Uh, you know, experienced and senior, uh, you know, shareholders starting to take interest in the Pitfield story. And, you know, we believe this is a good sign for the company, you know, moving forward in terms of uh, having a really stable, strong shareholder base. And with that said, I think the most important thing to discuss on this particular call and give people a chance to digest exactly what we've achieved in the last few months is really to focus on on pitfield so pitfield is a is a really unique geological occurrence it sits on the western margin of the yilgarn Craton, and it sits basically at the juncture of two major faults so there's a darling fault system that runs along the western side of the yilgarn and separates that from the perth basin and then there's this yandanuka uh, lineament. It's a, it's a fault system that comes up through the Craton and they cross over. They cross over exactly a long strike just from our, uh, our pit field project. So these two major faults have no doubt created some, some pretty major, uh, you know, structural faulting around this particular area at pit field. The most unique thing about pit field though is it, it's, it's age. So in terms of geological age, it's what we call a neoproterozoic uh, basin. And this is a very unique uh, area of Western Australia because the only other neoproterozoic rocks within this particular part, these, these old rock systems within Western Australia, this is up in the, uh, the Patterson province. And that's where you have Nifty, you have Telfer, you have some really major copper discoveries. So the... The Neoproterozoics are globally important area, uh, uh, epic for, um, for copper mineralization. We know this area has been previously explored by majors, uh, but that was probably 10, 20, 30, 40 years ago now. So we've, we know that the, uh, the early exploration phases that were applied uh, never resulted in any extensive drilling into the actual uh, sediment hosts that we believe the copper deposits lie in. There are numerous historic copper mines within the area, particularly Baxter's, which is just uh, just a, a, a few kilometres to the uh, to the west of our particular targets, and they uh, they mine copper ore, copper rock between twenty to thirty percent copper, so very high grade copper mineralisation. 
spread up and down the entire basin. And interesting enough, this is an area that has been underexplored, this whole western margin of the Yilgarn. Yet in the recent years, we've seen some major discoveries, particularly I flagged the Julemar project. It's a nickel copper PGE project owned by Chalice. Now, Chalice is now market capped at well over $1 billion Australian. So it's, it's a major a major discovery, major uh, company builder. So we're very excited about the potential along that entire fault system. Now, really to zoom in on what we have discovered ourselves over the last six months, basically we took on this project where we, we could see a, a gravity high from you know, exploration work previously done by the West Australian Geological uh, you know, Institutions, the, the government funded uh, exploration programs. We knew there was a density high. So we flew a, 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 an airborne magnetic back in June last year and we lit this thing up with a massive uh, magnetic anomaly. It's 40 kilometers north, uh, north to south and uh, basically stretches almost across the whole basin. So we know that there's been a big alteration event, and this is coincident with a gravity high, but also we flew electromagnetics. And the significance of that is the electromagnetics have picked up this highly conductive sediments around the siltstones, the sandstones around this region are conductive. Now, that is extremely important in terms of our uh, geological model. What we believe has happened is that the oxidation fluids have come up from the basin through those fault systems, those structures have pumped up into the basin. They've brought up copper, they've brought up other base metals, and they've come into contact with these reductive rocks. So basically the reductants in the rock drop out the copper. That's the theory. That's what we're looking for. And we think we are on the cusp of finding not just one, but multiple, multiple sediment hosted strata bound controlled copper deposits. Now, I talked about the previous historical work and whilst you know, no drilling, particularly deep drilling into this uh, particular anomaly was carried out. CRA back in 1993, they did complete a lot of soil sampling and auger sampling across this region. And what they discovered was a 10 kilometre uh, copper and soil anomaly just south of the Baxter's mine, which you'll see in the middle of the, uh, of the slide there, basically right in the middle of our tenements. So that high copper anomaly extends over 10 kilometers when you take it from the full length across from Baxter's all the way to the south. They also identified a four kilometer long copper anomaly to the north near a place called Mount Scratch. Now we've been looking at this data, pulling it together, assessing this. We've gone back into the uh, into these uh, license areas back in November just uh, to, to look at soil sampling. We were looking at rock chip sampling. And what we've been able to do is add, ex, you know, we've extended these targets by at least another four kilometres to the north. So that's now over eight kilometres of anomaly. We've picked up extremely high grade rock samples near surface. The best sample we picked up was just under 18% copper and 125 grams per tonne of silver. So highly, highly uh, exciting you know, these are, this is float, this is rock samples that have probably been brought up by old artisanal scrapings, probably down 20, 20 30 metres. So these, uh, there's clear indication right across our licence area of copper anomalism at the surface. So what we started to do, what we're really focusing our, our attention to now is to identify drill targets. And we engaged a, a geophysical group, a, a consultants, back in December to start doing what we call a dipole to dipole induced polarization uh, geophysical surveying. So basically, you, you, you stretch an a, a, a electrical cable about two kilometers across the surface, you pump electricity into the ground, and what you're looking for 
is some sort of charged response or resistivity from the ground, some sort of indication that that there's you know something that can carry an electrical charge. And and typically what we're looking for obviously is 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 sulfides. We're looking for for disseminated or massive sulfides within the uh, within the structure. So the outcome which we announced very early in February from that work was a, a very successful, uh, you know, very remarkable uh, response to the IP. We we weren't sure how effective the IP surveying would be, and we were very pleased with the outcome because what it basically shows is over a very large stretch uh, of, of the area that we tested, over 800 metres, down 150 to 200 metres depth, we, we started to see and pick up a, a very significant uh, charge response within an area that was basically also highly resistive. So the two things coming together basically are suggesting it's characteristic of a disseminated sulfide ore body. And so, uh, you know, really got excited by this. We tracked this particular target another 800 metres to the south and another line, the third line that we did another 800 metres to the south also picked up this anomaly. So now we're talking about a drill target area that is at least 100, 100 metres wide and well over one and a half, uh, well, one and a half kilometres uh, on strike on length. So, you know, it's, it's, a, it's a really large uh, drill target that we've identified. And what we, uh, we plan to do in the next, uh, you know, in the near future is to get back onto those particular targets with an RC rig and to start drilling and testing what it is that this IP uh, geophysics has identified. What's, uh, you know, until we get the, uh, the drill rigs into this, we really don't know. But, uh, you know, obviously we are very, uh, very, you know, as I said, excited. We're in, this is a, a great breakthrough for the company in terms of having uh, multiple drill targets over a reasonably large area where we know that we have high copper anomalism at surface. So, um, no, we're going to get started on this as soon as possible. Uh, what was interesting too was a, a fifth uh, IP survey, which was carried out 12 kilometres to the south of this particular target, also picked up very high chargeable responses. So it's clearly an indication that this is not a, a uh, you know, an isolated occurrence. There, there could be multiple charge responses picked up across the whole 40 kilometres of, of strike. And if we can demonstrate that that represents uh, uh, disseminated sulfides or, or, or copper mineralization, then uh, you know we're going to have multiple drill targets down this whole system. To give a sense of scale, you know, 40 kilometers. If those people that often think where they might be living at the time might jump in a car and try and drive 40 k's and just see you know how far you have to go. It's, uh, it's, it's a big area, and we think that this is probably most comparable to, uh, you know, one of the world's largest copper deposits. The, uh, the Udakan ore region within Russia represents, uh, you know, what is basically the third largest uh, copper deposit or resource, has reserves of uh, just over 1.2 billion tonnes at 2% copper. So these these... Uh, these strata bound, you know, sediment hosted copper deposits have scale and they have grade, and that what uh, that what's making this uh, such an attractive, uh, you know, district for us, if you like, copper bearing district. Um, you know, to to keep our uh, keep our drill rigs active and to keep looking for where these copper deposits might lie within this forty kilometre, uh, you know, anomaly. So again, it's 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 a scale that is quite uh, quite astonishing when one looks at it from the point of view that this could have multiple uh, copper deposits along the whole forty-kilometer strike. 
Moving off pit field briefly, uh, and happy to come back and answer questions on all of that. Uh, our Eclipse, our, our initial target Eclipse, which we uh, we have a mining license and a, and a, a number of high grade targets. We uh, we announced back in February last year that we would expand this target by entering into a tribute agreement. That tribute agreement meant that we increased our holding here from three square kilometres to over 10, and they are both mining licences. So if we are able to identify a, a resource that is uh, economic in this particular area, then we can move into mine development very quickly. So there has a certain value uh, associated with the... Uh, with the fact that these things are already uh, registered as mining licenses. What's really interesting in this particular area is that we are picking up pretty well anywhere we drill near the old shafts, we're certainly picking up high grade gold mineralization. So the, 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 the gold is tied up in a, uh, in a fairly narrow, uh, north striking, uh, a steeply dipping shear. So it tends to be, uh, you know, quite narrow vein gold systems. And we've been searching for some time now to pull these systems together to see whether we can find a, 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 an intercepts that are going to give us better width or closer to the surface. And in the process of doing that, we have identified a, a, a different commodity within the license area. And that is, uh, that is kaolin. It's, uh, it's basically China clay. It's a, a very bright, very white industrial mineral uh, used in, in a number of uh, commodities, uh, making particularly things like China that most people are probably uh, eating their dinner off. Uh, glossy paper uh, is, is predominantly uh, uh, using this type of uh, you know, feedstock. And most recently, it's become a potential uh, resource for high purity aluminium. Uh, so we're quite excited about the potential of this discovery. Uh, and to give you a sort of sense of where that lies, uh, the two main goal targets that we've identified that we've been working on, which was the Eclipse target on, the, uh, on our initial license area, uh, the homeward bound target where we announced uh, early last year a number of really stellar grade intercepts, you know, uh, five metres at nearly nine grams, uh, another three metres at, at nine grams or 10 grams. So we, we really, uh, really have some high grade targets here. But what was interesting was the Kalen is actually formed a, a deposit just north west of that homeward bound trend. And it heads towards what we believe crosses our license into the Eclipse license area. So our, our plan here is to look at doing a, a further drill program to see the extent of the kaolin and to complete metallurgical test work uh, to ascertain the quality of the kaolin in terms of, of, you know, is this something we can quickly dig up, screen, dry and ship uh, to, to the market. So uh, it, it's, it's an exciting prospect, but one that is being treated with, uh, with patience. We don't intend to, uh, you know, divert our attention from Pitfield, uh, and we certainly uh, think that the Pitfield project is where the company's future lies. This could simply be, you know, a, a small cash cow for us to continue to develop and uh, generate, you know, a reasonable amount of cash to support further development at Pitfield. Moving uh, to the last couple of projects, just briefly, uh, we talked about Staveley. It's in an excellent position. The Staveley Arc is is highly prospective. It's uh, it's a Cambrian Arc. It's a volcanic arc, uh, located not too far from some pretty major gold. Uh, zones in terms of uh, you know the store gold operations in Bendigo area where we have Fosterfield, uh, which is a pretty major underground gold development, and of course the old store gold mines. We also, uh, as we said early in the presentation, are sitting 
exactly a long strike, basically north along strike from uh, the Staveley Minerals uh, discovery at Thursday Gosson, which uh, which identified 32 metres at 6% copper. So, you know, certainly something that we would be looking to replicate once we get on the ground at Staveley, at the Staveley project. Um, and we're looking forward to that. We, we should be advancing on to that towards the end of this year once we've completed our initial drill programs at Pitfield and, and, and followed up on the target, the Kalen target at, at Jindalby. Uh, we would probably do a small uh, small airborne magnetic survey at, at Staveley initially and then follow that up with any, any uh, early exploration work to identify potentially a copper porphyry. So Staveley has uh, a number of, uh, of previous targets that are located within the license area and just to the south, but predominantly we know that there has been chalcopyrite quartz dolomite veins intercepted in an area called Mine Paddock, which is within the license area and sits within uh, or sits over a number of volcanics that we've identified from you know, government regional surveying. So this is the area that we would probably focus our attention and particularly in terms of flying uh, further aeromagnetics. At Walton, uh, an interesting project for us at Walton, it's uh, within the Southern Cross domain of Western Australia. So it's basically in the middle of this Yulgarn, uh, uh, Yulgarn Craton. It sits within greenstone belts, so the you know the famous greenstones here are, are, are renowned for for you know VHMS systems. It's it's we've had nickel discoveries, we've seen high grade gold projects, and we've recently seen uh, you know lithium projects in these particular systems. So you know Walton presents for us a, a an opportunity uh, to uh, to get into a greenfields area that is in a highly prospective, really good postcode. And, uh, you know, without spending a lot of time and money, we can do a lot of surface work just to see what potential there is at Walton uh, before we decide whether or not we need to go back in and drill. So it's, it's, a, it's on the slow burn at the moment, but nonetheless could be a very exciting uh, part of our portfolio. So to summarise pretty well where we, uh, where we are at this particular point in time and what we see coming forward in terms of news flow, uh, for this quarter, quarter uh, one, 2023, we've already commenced further IP surveying and geochemical mapping. So we've been on the ground the last few weeks. We've had another... A sequence of, uh, of IP surveys completed. They have not yet been uh, 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 assessed by our geophysics uh, consultants, but uh, we expect to get that within the next couple of weeks. And that could well provide us with further drilling targets uh, for, the, uh, for the maiden drilling program. We've also uh, advanced to the point where we have uh, all the approvals in place to start drilling at Pitfield. And we are in the midst of starting to look at, at the timing of that project in terms of mobilization. Uh, but we certainly are on track, I think, to, uh, you know, to get on the ground there in, in, the, in the near future. So we're, we're excited about the potential and we will make an announcement uh, as soon as we've uh, confirmed the, the drilling mobilization and starting date and, uh, and get that market information out. The... Uh, we talked a little bit about the Kalen discovery at Jindalby. Uh, so that work commenced early January. So basically over the last uh, you know, few weeks, we've been assessing uh, that Kalen potential uh, as well as the high grade gold in the area. And we will be planning uh, further metallurgical test work coming up to get a, a handle on the quality of that particular target. So moving into Q2, uh, the IP survey and geochemical mapping will continue. We will make our maiden RC drilling uh, project. That will start. That's our priority. 
at Pitfield and the Met testing and the valuation of the Kalen at, at the Eclipse in Dalby should be, uh, that initial program will be completed. Moving into uh, the third quarter, I would expect, I would expect that we would be developing and prioritising some new drill targets at Pitfield certainly capturing the reconnaissance work that we've started uh, you know at the end of this quarter early early q2 uh, and i stress that reconnaissance word because basically the drilling that we will do at pitfield is reconnaissance it's very early phase basically testing the concept that we have uh, a, a sediment hosted strata bound uh, you know copper deposits so we need to get our drill rigs into that material to see what it is that we're picking up on the IP. And uh, once we have that information, we can then better focus a second phase of drilling to, uh, to advance that project to, uh, you know, to start to really find where these copper anomalisms uh, are, are sitting below the surface. I would expect that we would be drilling at Eclipse and Jindalby in that particular quarter. I think uh, it's highly likely it'll be an air core program. You know, shallow drilling, wide spacing, relatively low cost, but we would seek to add significant uh, volume uh, to this carbon target and, you know, hopefully, uh, you know, come up with a, uh, a resource at the end of that particular drill campaign. I don't see why we, uh, we can't advance that very quickly. Airborne geophysical surveys would almost certainly have started at, at Staveley. We, we can certainly schedule that. Uh, we don't need to get on the ground physically. You know, we could start that uh, pretty well any time over the next six months once the window opens up to, uh, to get the, uh, the geophysical team in there. And I would certainly expect to be on the ground at Walton, even if it's just geological mapping, rock and soil sampling, just to, just to start to see what Walton might contain, you know, what clues we can get from that work to see what Walton might, uh, might have under, under its, uh, you know, under the, the sort of surface crust that we can see, uh, you know, from the, uh, you know, from the area, you know, the aerial imaging. Moving on to the final uh, chapter of this particular year, I'd certainly expect to be drilling multiple targets at Pitfield. I think that's highly likely we will be on the ground again. You know, hopefully we can accelerate that and get drilling programs started sooner. But, you know, realistically, we need to get the information from the reconnaissance program. We need to lay everything out and prepare you know, a, a, a really comprehensive work program. But I would certainly be looking to get stuck into that as quickly as possible. Um, I would hope to be doing some resource modelling and studies on the Kalen targets and any other gold, high-grade gold targets at Eclipse and Jindalby. Again, looking, looking to come up with a reasonably uh, quick, uh, quick low-cost uh you know, entry into a producing operation where we can generate our own cash flow. And that would set us up, you know, really nicely for the future in terms of major work programs at something like Pitfield. Uh, data collection and analysis would be ongoing at Staveley and Walton. But again, as I can, I've emphasised, I think that we would see those as being um, somewhat of a slow burn at the moment and keeping our focus on Pitfield. So in summary, you know, you know, what is our our message? You know, what are we what are we uh, you know what are we selling in terms of, of potential here within Empire Metals? Um, clearly, Pitfield has all the hallmarks of a giant copper mineralized system. You know, it, it, if you had to put down ten things on a bit of paper that said, you know, what are you looking for? Is this here? You know, we've probably ticked off somewhere between seven or eight of them. And, and every time we get new information, that information collaborates or, 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 or supports our theory. So we've been very excited. It's time to drill. You know, now's the time to put the drill program together and get, uh, get assays into those particular targets. I 
think Eclipse Jindalbi remains highly prospective for us. There's value there within those tenements. We've spent quite a lot of money over the recent years building up that particular project. I don't think that's going to be wasted. I think we'll get something out of that particular uh, asset. And, uh, you know, I look forward to coming back to the market, you know, in, in the months ahead to uh, to confirm that we, uh, you know, we've got something that we can turn into a, a viable operation and generate cash flow. Uh, you know, we spent a lot of time in the last 12 months, 18 months, reducing our risk, uh, growing the company. We, we built ourselves up from three square kilometres to 2,155 square kilometres over four major projects. These are uh, geographically diverse. They are geologically diverse. You know, we're hunting copper, we're hunting gold. We've got other commodities on our sites now. We're dealing with, uh, you know, sediment hosted copper targets, but, but at Stavely we're looking for porphyry. So, you know, we have diversified ourselves. We've got the capacity within the team to manage that. And I believe that's that's reduced our, our expiration risk, you know, considerably. I think we have huge potential, great postcodes. We're in the right commodities. I think, you know, there's a there's a lot coming down the pipeline for, for Empire in terms of expiration success. We built a great team. We had a great board to start with. We've got great talent across, uh, you know, from the chairman all the way down to our exploration geologists. You know, I, I'm really pleased that we're able to recruit such a strong exploration manager in this market. Really happy that we've been able to bolster the team. So, you know, we're self-sufficient in terms of expertise and we are now even more so well-funded. And I'm really pleased that we were able to, you know, get a small fundraising away when we did uh, closing it out last, well, announcing it on Monday uh, that we had, we'd managed to raise uh, 1.25 million uh, pounds in the market, uh, you know, before cost. But what I think that has done in terms of securing our immediate future is it, it means that should we be successful, with this first drill campaign at Pitfield, we can roll on. You know, we can continue the work. We don't have to pull up stumps. We don't have to wait to go back and say, look, we're going to need some more money to drill further. We are, you know, literally bulletproof at this particular point in time over the next 12 months to get on the ground, do the work, deliver the results. <coughs> Excuse me. So I'm very happy to say that that's, uh, that's what we've been able to put together in the last... 12 months and I'm looking forward to certainly the next uh, next few months to, to come back to the uh, come back to uh, the shareholder base here give another presentation like this one on the back of uh, expiration success so um, you know happy to take any questions as we uh, as uh, I think Alex mentioned the process sure I'll pass them back to Alex sure Greg, that's great. Thank you very much indeed for your presentation this morning. I will now bring your cameras back up. Ladies and gentlemen, please continue to submit your questions using the Q&A tab situated on the top right corner of your screen. While the company take a few moments to review those questions submitted today, I would like to remind you that a recording of this presentation, along with a copy of the slides and the published Q&A can be accessed via your investor dashboard. Sean, Greg, as you can see, we have received several questions throughout today's presentation. And if I could just hand over to you to read out those questions and give responses where appropriate to do so, and I'll pick up from you both at the end. Thank you. Well, certainly I'll start. And if I, uh, Greg, if, I, if, if, if it looks like it's something you'd be better, I'll hand pass to you. Uh, so the first question that's come up uh, is how quickly can you get a rig on site? Are there any long lead times? The answer is we have already gone contracted the rig. So we have a rig booked. Uh, we don't yet haven't given them a start date to mobilize because uh, we're still putting together the final details. But, uh, you know, it, it, it's, it's, it's an unusual uh, period here in Western Australia for the drilling community. In fact, there's actually... It's pretty quiet, to be honest. Post post the uh, our summer holidays, 
uh, it's 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 been the weather's been pretty brutal to be honest. So a lot of rain in the north. Uh, a lot of the uh, a lot of the the companies have rigs actually on on, on standby. Um, so we managed to get a, a very good, very capable uh, drilling contractor, uh, highly experienced in in drilling in these these pastoral areas. Really happy that we were able to secure that. And we'll announce the commencement of drilling uh, as soon as we pinpoint their mobilisation. Uh, I, th I think it's fair to say, Sean. It's a matter of weeks. Uh, you know, when we're not talking months, uh, it's it's weeks. But as Sean said, we'll we'll put put out uh, the firm date once we've been able to finalise these last couple of uh, last couple of items. Yes. What is the strategy to maximise the value of the assets? Will you look to prove up and sell or partner? I think that that's a good question, obviously. It's something that we consider uh, and talk amongst ourselves at the board level. Where Where is Empire's future lies? Where are we going? But right now, we're, we're such an early expiration. We're, we're, we're at such an early expiration phase. And I think we have such huge potential on, on not just the pit field uh, license area, but but the others have have you know great postcodes, great opportunities. I, I would be very loath for us to to um, you know to step away from any of those things prematurely. I think we need to do the work. Uh, for the last twelve months, I've been talking about you know you do the science, you do the hard yards, you 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 get your information, you get your data. You you, you 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 work out exactly what you might or might not have and you do an evaluation and then you know we'll come back we'll discuss that not only amongst the board but we would be you know presenting optionality to the, you know explaining our strategy as we go I think if pitfield was to turn out to be a, 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 a you know one of the world's major copper discoveries, then naturally at some point in the future we would have to consider bringing in a, a, a larger partner. Um, but right now I, I can, you know, I can drill that up and down 40 kilometres and keep hitting hopefully copper. Hopefully we'll start hitting copper mineralisation in, in the first drill program. Um, you know, we will have, we will, we will have multiple uh, major partners knocking on our door looking to, to somehow get a, get a seat at the table. So, yep, it's all part of our uh, overall strategy. The Eclipse project for short-term cash flow looks key. How long do you anticipate from drill results to production potentially? Look, when we started with the Eclipse project, it was on the premise that there could be a small open pit, high-grade gold, Get in, get out, maybe mine it over 12 months, make make a few million dollars. And you know, to be honest, you know, I think 18 months ago when I joined, we 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 presented to the market that 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 wasn't that wasn't a strategy at the time that we thought was wise. We thought it was high risk. Uh, there was potential to make some money. Yes, there's also potential to lose some money. So we've we've kept our powder dry on that we are assessing potential to go back to eclipse and and relook at uh, at a gold small gold producing operation there we're also obviously looking at bolting on you know the high grade gold targets that we've identified at Jindalby, uh, particularly around the home state there could be a uh, you know another small gold project there that we could bring into production and and toll treat uh, but you know I personally think we, uh, you know, this Kalen discovery needs, this is an itch that we need to scratch. We we need to go in and have a good look at what that deposit represents and get some valuation on it because that could be worth a lot more than any of these small gold projects in, in my mind. And if that is the case, then we can get into production quite quickly. Uh, I mean, this 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 deposit has... Virtually no no cover it. Now there's no cert, there's no overburden. You you dig the top meter off and you're into the ore. Uh, and we're on a direct shipping route down the road, sealed road 
55 kilometers to a railhead straight out to the port. So um, it, it might sound very simple, but the reality is, um, you know, when you're dealing with an industrial commodity, if you can knock down the market and get a, a, a and get sufficient buyers interest in this product, you know, we, we can start mining pretty quickly. So I, I'm actually think that's got quite a lot of potential for us as a as a small cash cow. Uh, just trying to interpret the next question. Can you come on the recent? Do you want me to oh. take that one, John? Okay. Yeah, yes, I think so. But that's I assume that's interactive investor, is it? Uh, well, the the question is commenting on the recent um, uh, investment. Are there any institutions currently being spoken to, and at what point do we think they'd be excited about Empire? Um, look, the the more the recent placing that was announced earlier this week. Uh, was predominantly, there was a, a retail portion of it, there were a couple of smaller funds, and then we've got a number of these high net worths. Uh, you know, Sean alluded to at the start of his his talk, this, this project has now managed to capture the interest of uh, a number of investors in, um, in Australia. And, you know, these are, these are people who have had significant experience in the sector, made made a lot of money along the way, and have now um, have now identified Empire as a as a very prospective uh, target. Um, as far as institutions, we have made a concerted effort, particularly over the last three months, um, since Pitfield's really uh, grown to be at the forefront of of what we're looking at. Uh, to start talking to investors, uh, sorry, institutional investors. Um, we have had uh, a number of meetings with UK-based institutions. We've actually also had quite a few meetings with Australian-based institutions. Um, and a lot of that's just about getting on their radar. I mean, at this stage, we're still too small. Uh, but you know, in the same way, we've identified the the, the potential scale of, of again, Pitfield. Um, these institutions are also um, pretty excited about the potential as well. So while we're still too small at this stage, um, we're de definitely getting on people's radars. We're having discussions. Uh, we're being followed by a number of, of very large parties uh, so I think as, as we continue to have success and as we grow, um, we will naturally start to sort of change that shareholder profile and look to bring, bring on funds and larger institutions. Hopefully yes, definitely. That. And I think we're getting a good spread too. I think we're starting to see a lot more investors come out of the Australian uh, investor scene, and that's really encouraging uh, in my mind. Yeah, you know, yeah, yeah. Particularly given, particularly given, it's pretty tough for Australians to invest in the uh, uh, in in particularly the AIM market. Uh, there's a lot of a lot of the Australian brokers just don't want to deal with the additional work that's required to invest on AIM. So the fact that uh, that there's a quite significant group of people who are now making that effort. Uh, I think is a is is a is a real uh, positive as well. Absolutely. Um, next question: uh, <clears throat> How will expiration be impacted by agricultural requirements locally? So, particularly at Pitfield, um, we'll answer that uh, directly. Uh, Pitfield is a predominant. Well, it is a, a a part of the wheat belt, the northern wheat belt system. Had a really good crop last year by the way so they've you know farmers are all very happy we've uh we've got land access agreements on five of these these properties at the moment with a number of the the, the, the landowners considering and we're discussing further uh, access agreements we prioritize them so it's not like only five out of the you know a dozen or so have, have agreed it, it was basically the first five priorities that we went to have all signed up um, so what that effectively allows us to do in consultation with the landowner is get on the property and do ground disturbing activities, uh, like, you know, for instance, drilling. Um, 
and uh, you know, there's been no problem whatsoever so far with working with them. We've we've seized the opportunity to get in now because uh, in in Australian farming uh, sequence, uh, th th they've already harvested, so the the crops uh, won't go back in until probably you know some of the first rains towards the end of April May. Uh, so we're mindful of that. We don't want to be driving across and putting big rigs across their paddocks uh, without reasonable, uh, you know, confidence that we, uh, you know, we're about to find more copper. But um, so we were sequencing our activities with the farmers. Uh, we have uh, really good relationships at the moment. If it comes to uh, a point in time where we need to get onto a field, and there's crop, uh, that, that, that's not a problem. We have a compensation arrangement with the farmers where we compensate them for whatever crop damages or, or crop losses they incur. It, it's just, you know, common sense in my mind that you try and, and, and avoid getting into those situations by good planning. So, uh, you know, that's our first priority. Don't disturb the farms unless you, uh, uh, you know, have no choice work with the farmers. Um, we've already talked to one of the farmers. They're going to provide accommodation for our drill rig crew. Um, another farmer's doing all the rehab and cleanup work for us. So, the, you know, the farmers are actually getting some direct benefit out of our activities on site as well. So it's, it's, a, it's a good relationship. I think it's important to note here again, the scale uh, really affects this as well. I mean, if we were looking at a say an eclipse size project, a couple square kilometres of high grade gold, mm -hmm. you, your, your work is focused on that particular point. And if, if you can't access that, you can't access it. But we're given the scale of, of pit field, um, it would be, I, I think, extremely unlikely that we would find a situation where all of our target, all of our targets, you know, were, were, were under crop or, or inaccessible. I mean, that's just not going to happen. So yeah, no, that's uh, this one can access. And, and there and it's not all farm, it's not all paddocks too, by the way. There are natural bushlands within the farming regions. There are corridors uh, that aren't under crop. So uh, you know, we've left those you know, they are they don't form part of our priority targets this first campaign because you know, logically if if we go back and drill in the next few months. Uh, and the crops have been uh, planted, we can go to areas, for instance, where there's just natural bushland and, and complete the next phase of drilling if, if the targets are there. So we, no, no great concern at, at Pitfield or, or any of the other projects for that matter in terms of, of land access. Sean, Greg, that's great. And thank you for addressing all those questions that came in from investors today. And of course, the company will review all questions submitted today and we will publish those responses on the Investor Meet Company platform. Uh, but perhaps before we direct the investors to provide you with their feedback, which I know is particularly important to you and the company, Sean, could I please ask you for a few closing comments? Thank you. Well, well to simplify things, I think the potential that we've unearthed at Pitfield is, is you know, of a scale that, that now, we probably didn't imagine six months ago that we would be sitting here talking about a giant copper province or, or district. Um, but, you know, that's the way it's, it's worked out. As we've done further and further work at Pitfield, our confidence level that we're on the, you know, we, we've got something pretty major globally is, is higher and higher and we're going to drill. And, you know, the great news is that we've set ourselves up to do that. We, 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 we've got the funds We've planned the drilling work. We've got the, the exploration team in place. Um, you know, we've we've done all the things over the last six to twelve months to set this company up for for success. Uh, and I think, uh, you know, I can't wait to the to, to, to we get on the ground there now and start to to get some results. So, uh, yeah, Pitfield is is clearly our our uh, our our first and, and foremost uh, priority. And uh, as I said, I, I look forward to keeping the market informed about how we're going in that particular area. And, and of course, on the other assets, 
once we get started there, if, if we discover something, it'll be with the equal enthusiasm to, uh, to bring things into, uh, you know, get some value from our, our portfolio. That's great. Thank you, Sean and Greg, once again for updating investors today. Could I please ask investors not to close this session as you will now be automatically redirected to provide your feedback in order that the management team can better understand your views and expectations. This will only take a, mo a few moments to complete and I am sure will be greatly valued by the company. On behalf of the management team of Empire Metals Limited, we would like to thank you for attending today's presentation. That concludes today's meeting. Good afternoon to you all. Thanks. Thank you.